Okay. Uh, sorry, I haven't built a fence all day. That's all right. How's it coming? Here, I'll give you a little view. That's Lincoln's 16 by 72 foot dog run. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's the fence you're building. Yeah. Gotcha. Wait, are you putting wire on it? Yeah, it's all galvanized and brown wood. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a nice big run. You'll have, a, you'll have plenty of room to move. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been sweet. I So I just took all Easter break working on this project. 25 post holes to dig and, you know, stretch and wire and leveling. And I didn't, I use that square brown one. So it's not like the post that you notch in, you know, like the ranch fence. But my next door neighbor, Dave, who's 84 years old, has come out and helped me every single day with this project. He rolls out about 9.30. He knocks off about 1.30. Every little trick and tool that you might need to know, Dave has, the, Dave has the tool. He knows the trick. He, he built fence in uh, Missouri growing up as a kid. Oh. His grandpa, grandpa taught him how to build fence. So, you know, oh, hold on, Matt. We need a stretcher. Hold on, Matt. We need to... We need the pliers. Hold on, Matt. You know, and you know, anyway, it's been a, it's been a gift, real real joy. So yeah, so so he's reliving the glory days. Oh well, yeah, he's and then he he retrofitted my gate. He decided we needed to do some welding on that, but it wasn't good enough from tractor supply. So we spent one full day welding. I've learned a lot in a week, and I have a pretty custom gate. Right on. <laughs> Very good. All right. All right. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. And Christian is not with us. He's doing God's business somewhere. The work of the Lord. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. All right. So we're in uh, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. Matthew's here, too. That's right. All right. You want, me to, you want to set it up or you want me to read a chunk? Well, let me set it up, and then we'll pray, and then you can read... Uh, uh, just the first verse. So the I, so the way I read this, and I'm not sure if this is uh, Paul's intention or or my mind seeking order, but it seems to me that Paul has taken, you know, the uh, oh maybe like chapter four or five through to eleven dealing with problems, you know, issues. Um, you know, eating meat sacrificed to idols, marriage issues. Uh, the you know the the weak and the strong the various things that we've you know kind of seen, and now he's he's turning towards what the church is supposed to look like, the good news, um, and so I, I think the next you know the, the next few chapters are really great takes on kind of Paul's vision of the church, and I think that's that's cool. So let's uh, let's open up in prayer and we'll get going. So, Lord, we thank you for the blessing of being together and ask that you just be with Christian with whatever he's doing. And as we kind of talk through 1 Corinthians 12, encourage us, be with us. Amen. Amen. So, 1 Corinthians 12, 1. I mentioned this little detail in, uh, in the sermon yesterday. Uh, but it's but it's worth spending a little time on. What are you are you reading ESV NIV? What what are you reading? I have an ESV, and then I brought the message today just to keep things spicy. Okay, so, all right. Well, also, you want it from the ESV? Well, I'll or, do both. Yeah. Let's see how let's see how the message does it too. All right. So here's here's the ESV. Now concerning pneumaticoi. I mean, no. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. Is that what you want? Just the first verse? Yeah, just the first verse. Okay. Yeah. And read so, it from the message and see what Eugene Peterson, who, trained, who, who who wrote the message, how, how he deals with this little detail. Yeah. I read the chapter yesterday. I thought it was pretty interesting. So he says, uh, what I want to talk about now is the various ways God's spirit gets worked into our life. The various ways God's spirit gets worked into our lives. Yeah, I'm not sure I like that so much. Okay. 
I'm just I, that's why I said I just I just wanted to bring it in and keep things interesting. So. Yeah, I like uh, now. Now your ESV has a note on spiritual gifts, right? That uh, that gives you an an alternative translation. Yes, or spiritual persons. Or spiritual persons, yeah, and that's where. And you said pneumaticoi, right? That's that's what he's, and that harkens back, right, to the end of chapter two, the the, the beginning of chapter three, where Paul contrasts, uh, you know, the spiritual person versus the carnal person or the person of the flesh, and and that's where we introduce that million dollar word, pneumaticos, and here Paul's using it in in a plural form. Pneumaticoi. And so I like to think he's saying now concerning you know the spiritual ones, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Right? So he's I I you know, I, I'd like to think now now we're going to talk about the church, right? The spirit-filled people of God. Uh in, in context, you, you you know, the reason why translations go with spiritual gifts, because he's going to jump right into the gifts. Uh, but interestingly, he uses a different word <laughs> when he wants to say gifts. Right. So, you know, you know, so that's interesting. Um, spirit filled ones. Paul really does have a have this deep conviction that the church is not a little bit different. It is really, really different in the world. Right. Not merely human. Back to that idea. That's right. That's exactly right. Not merely human, but nearly divine. And so that's why I'm saying like 11 through at least 14, if not into, you know, to the end, he's talking about how the church is unique, how dramatically different the, uh, the church is unique as we dwell with the spirit in our midst as the pneumatic as the pneumatic or the spirit filled ones however however you might want to translate that again i don't like spiritual persons because it feels like you might be a new ager or a, a guru sitting in a cave in touch with kind of the all that is thing no no this is absolutely holy spirit holy spirit dynamic and the language really puts the emphasis on on the holy spirit's presence well, in the second verse, right, you know that when you were pagans, you were led astray by mute idols, however, however you were led. So the contrast there is when you were pagans, as opposed to what you what you are now, right? To me, that helps clarify kind of the spiritual personhood he's talking about. Because he doesn't say, you know, as opposed to the gifts you once used, you're now, you know, he's talking about a whole different idea of personhood. Right. That's right. And I, and I like the idols that are mute, idols that don't speak, right? In oh. contrast to the spirit who does speak. I was saying it goes back to that idea uh, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the, the mute idols, um, that we're, we are the ones who energize idols, right? By our time, our attention, our effort, they actually don't have anything to contribute as opposed to a living God a God who speaks to us and engages us and partners with us. So, I mean, it's, it's building on ideas we've already seen in the letter. Yep. You know, and you know what, that, that when, uh, when I was at Davis, I took a class, I can't remember what it was, some kind of anthropology class or something like that. Whereas as we, we uh, took a look at uh, primitive tribal masks oh, yeah. and, and, and that whole segment was talking about, the sense of the called the numinous presence. Now, numinous play off panuma, right? But that spirit. Yeah, you know. So when you look at a mask, you you have this deep sense that there's something there, but it's mm. it's what you're bringing to it. Well, you know, it's 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 like the. Uh, Wait, you know, don't let's not get into mask. I just I just there's warning signs all over conversations about mask right now. Let's just skip <laughs> over that. <laughs> We gotta okay. be really careful. Okay. 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 There's let yeah, the, there's the Indian formation right over in West Golden Hills, right? Folks see you right, folks see an Indian in the mountain, right. right? Yeah. Right. So our or or the other one is uh when 9-11 came down, folks were convinced they saw demons in the smoke. Remember all those pictures that were going around? Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, our, our, our minds crave uh, order and I guess a sense of presence. And so, yeah, us bringing energy into the idols, you know, us bringing a sense that there's something there. When, yeah, that's why when I was a river guide, that, that's what you, half your job was, was trying to imagine things in rocks and point them out to people as you're going down river. You know, see the Indian head in that rock, see the buffalo there, see the giraffe, you know, I mean, that's that's how you pass the hours of still water, right, making right. things up in rocks, yeah. Yeah, but I, but I think that's a piece of, of that, you know, that, that 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 we bring energy into that stuff. And yeah, and, interesting. Okay. And Paul's saying, hey, that's that's a one way dial. That, that's 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 a one way conversation. You know, you're you're that 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 Indian rock has nothing to say to you. That's right. right? <laughs> Although there are demons behind that whole dynamic, right? So so that is there. Um uh, right. Verse three, therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Um, this you know, confused I, me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, I think what Paul is doing is validating the Holy Spirit's presence in their midst. Because they aren't saying Jesus is cursed, you know they are, they are saying Jesus is Lord, so he's val. I, I think he's validating the Spirit's presence, even though they're confused and and divided and all that. No one is saying Jesus is cursed in the fellowship, right? And so and so I think that's Paul's way of saying, hey, you you guys are squared away. You're confused. You know you're. Mm -hmm. you're you gotten caught up by silly things, but let's but let's talk about what's really going on. Yeah. That's how I read that. No one, no one speaking of ever says Jesus says no one says Jesus says, except in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so that's an, a bit of an affirmation there, right? I, yeah, so you're not so. you're not totally off, and the Holy Spirit is in your midst. But let's let's tighten things up or have a clearer understanding. Back to the first line. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be uninformed. Yeah. So he's te Paul's teaching here, really. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or coaching. You know, especially at the end of 11, when he really hammers them about failing to discern the body. I mean, that's, that is about as strong as Paul gets. Eh, maybe a couple yeah. places in Galatians, you might you get a little more intense, but you no, know, he, he, he really has taken them to the woodshed. And I think now he's he's validating. Hey guys, just because you're confused does not mean the Holy Spirit is not in your midst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Right? Okay, then he gets into uh, the varieties of gifts. Okay. And there's you want me to read? yeah. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. Just read um, maybe four through seven. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but in the same spirit, and there are variety of services, varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit of a common good. Where do you say this up? Right there. Keep going? No, that's okay. good. So just a couple things to point out. One is the word used there that's translated gifts. Any idea what that word is? Not pneumatically. It's not pneumatically. That's right. It's 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 a word for grace, charisma. Charis yeah. is grace. This would be charismata. So a grace, right? There are varieties. Now there, now, now there are graces. Now there are a variety of graces, graces, but the same spirit. There are, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So so we tend to think about grace as kind of the uh, the movement of God in forgiveness, for by grace mm -hmm. you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. I, I think I mentioned this yesterday as well. But for Paul, grace is a far richer word, far, you know, opens up all the resources that the Lord has at his disposal. And what Paul is going to do it be doing here is going to be identifying some of those graces 
some of those resources that flow out of the fact that God is a gracious God. And the word he uses is charismata, things of grace. Yeah, that's interesting. You think about like a secular definition of gifts would be the things that we're good at, our strengths, you know, our, our gifts, right? As opposed to a grace, something that's God given, something that's provided and from him. Um, it's just an interesting little twist on the, you know, the strength finder test that we all take when we're taking career education or whatever. It's that it, sense of flowing from the spirit. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. And, and, and it's a correct, it's a corrective on a godless worldview. And, and that's where most mm -hmm. of us go. Usually it all, you know, God isn't the dominant active party in the midst of life. Maybe I'll yell, you know, I'll, I'll cry help and he'll help me from time to time. You know, that's this, you know, the, you know, the deistic theism, modern therapeutic deism that, that uh, this guy named Christian Smith, kind of characterized the American church as uh, uh, as a religion where, where God is far away, uh, only helps us when we're in trouble, and what help means is making us feel better. Modern therapeutic deism. Yeah. And that's and, and that's what you identify. Well, that's my strengths. God can help me in my strengths. No, no, it's, it's all of, it's all of, it all flows from God's grace. Yeah. Gift. Yeah. As, as gift. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's going to do that and, 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 and we'll take a look at those uh, in a second, but what's real, but what's really interesting when you take a close look at those, at those verses. Uh, so I made a list here. A body, like as in body of Christ, his body, that word is used 18 times. Spirit, pneuma, or, or pneumatikos is used 12 times. Members, as in, you know, body parts, is used 12 times. The word one or single is used 12 times. Uh, the word that's translated, uh, you know, the same as in the same spirit, that's used eight times. And then the word another is used eight times. Real density of language there. A real density of language, which is a good little kind of basic Bible study um, exercise is just to observe what you, what words are there and, um, you know, to, you know, to get a strong grip on, what the Bible's saying. What 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 is Paul's point here? And it's a familiar point for Paul. In fact, flip over to Ephesians four real quick, Matthew, and read Ephesians four one through six, because there he says it purely um, and directly. Ephesians four six, you said one through six. One through six. All right. I therefore a prisoner for the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as we are called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Okay. That's good enough. So what's yeah. Paul, what's Paul's point there? One, 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 one. Right. And so he's got that same. It it, it it's a, it's not as focused as it is in Ephesians four there, but but it's that same. You can tell. I I mean you know it's the same guy writing a different letter. He's he's got yeah. the same concern for unity and, and as he calls the the, uh, the church in Ephesus, you know, to make every effort to maintain the bonds of peace. You know, that's what he's been talking about throughout in in the in first Corinthians here. I just I'm backing out of here for a minute. I'm just wondering what Paul would have to say to the contemporary American church as as it is set up on every corner. You know, I just 
I mean, there's good and bad, right? Like when we cooperate, when we participate together, when we recognize the kingdom community, which we've talked about before, we're on target. But when we when we began to just, uh, I don't know, build fences. And, and nowhere does Paul expect to be one single congregation anywhere. I mean, even in right. Corinth, he's got multiple, you know, house churches. But but the, the, there's this orientation that because of the nature of God, who God is and how God works, for there to be this profound unity. And, you know, Henry Schaefer, Henry and I have been having this conversation for years. You know, we, we just do not have uh, a practice, a habit in the various congregations, really, really, for the most part, with the maybe a few exceptions, rarely plan anything together, have any sense of the other congregations in the community, uh, right. any sense of shared mission. Uh, now, you know, we're working hard to change that into Hatchapi. Um you know, and that's where, you know, our, our kind of our integrated sense with the various house churches working really has potential to, to model a more biblical way of being church in, in that covenant dynamic where, where we each have our own identities and yet deeply federated together, deeply connect, connected together and learning how to communicate clearly and to resource one another and I'm not holding myself up here as an example. I'll just say this was this was gifted to me in the last two weeks that we returned to the worship center. Because when I drive in uh, from, from Bear Valley, I pass one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine churches on the way to Grace. And I, I've just started this practice of, of praying for each church as I, I drive by. You know, I, I and I just, 44 years old, that's probably the first time I've intentionally prayed for other churches other than the church that I belong to. So no, I, no, that's simple practice, but a good, I mean, you know, something we could all start. Yeah, yeah. And clearly that is Paul's concern, okay? Yeah, all right. Yeah, and and you see, and again, and, and just by observing those words and the density of those words, it just... Ooh, wow, Paul, Paul really wants to get after something here. Okay, right. now I want to say that because we because what because what 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 we want to hold together is that is the corporate reality of the body of Christ, okay, with the variety of the diversity of gifts. So that's right, that's where Paul is going here. He's going to identify, you know, a variety of resources that flow from the heart of God through his people into the community of faith. And Paul's going to take a moment to emphasize that variety. But as he does that, we don't want to lose the intensity of the corporate unity that yeah. that diversity, that variety is, in, is intended to, to work in. Right. Okay. Right. Because it's, it's easy. It's, it, it is easy to lose that. In fact, you know, having, you know, been a pastor for, I don't know how many years now, 35 years, uh, spiritual gifts are always, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a central teaching for an active church. Hey, what is your spiritual gift? Yeah. The old day pass tests you get to take. Yeah, that's right. And it, and it's almost always, um, Although there's, I mean, there's clear language, you know, it's God's gift to, to the church through you. I mean, that's pretty familiar spiritual gifts teaching, but I think the, you know, the emphasis probably because we're American individualists, you know, is on the individual component and not the. I've been, I've been waiting for how long it was going to take us to get to that phrase, American individualism, 31 minutes. Okay. But yeah. There, yeah. Uh, you know. When I pre-read this, I thought, oh, this is where this is where we have to go, right? Like this yeah. is where Paul's gonna this is where it hits us. Because it goes back to what you're talking about last week, the mutuality, but mutuality lends itself to this deep interdependence and partnership in one another, 
par- partnership with one another as, as we participate in the in the spirit what God's doing. But those are just not rugged Western individualist notions. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to lose in the church. You know, if if a, we're playing football and we had the specialized positions and everybody trained in their position, and then you practice together and then you won the Super Bowl, we would have a stronger sense of that. <laughs> You yeah. know, in, in 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 all kinds of team effort, that's just recognized. I mean, everyone. I mean, it landing a, a person on the moon, winning the Super Bowl. You know, uh, you know, building a building a road. I mean, whatever it is, you know, every, everyone recognizes the variety of trades and contributions. To, you know, to you know, to an end goal. But it, it just seems to be lost when, when when you come to church on Sunday, that corporate we're all in it together thing gets gets filtered out. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it really is. Especially like you said, there's so many examples we can think of how it's supposed to work. Yeah. Read read eight through eleven. And and so here you have one of Paul's gifts lists. Go go ahead and read that. Sure. For one. For to one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same spirit, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. A lot of ones there also. Gifts there's like, lots of ones and lots of another's. So that's what you were talking about a moment ago, where it's unity and diversity. Right. One, another, one, another. Right, right. Okay. And, and what's interesting, uh, when when most folks talk about spiritual gifts, they, they identify the spiritual gifts that Paul and Peter identify in the Bible as the spiritual gifts. But I'm convinced that these lists, Paul never intended these lists to be exhaustive, but descriptive. Mm. That, that, that there are other graces, right, uh, that come through people that Paul doesn't identify. And they're absolutely as, you know, bona fide, you know, gifts from God as the things that Paul identifies. Now, why can I say that with, with conviction? Well, because Paul makes all kinds of lists. He's got the, he's got the uh, fruit of the spirit. He's got the works of the flesh. He's got the, uh, you know, that's in Galatians 5. He's got the uh, the characteristics, you know, the qualifications, as we say, of elders in uh, 1 Timothy 3 and in Titus 2. And, and you look at all those lists, and none of them line up, you know, by bit by bit, you know? Right. So, you know, so Paul's intending to be descriptive. Um, you know, so we can think about, man, you know, what what are some experiences, you know, that that we've had through, you know, that others have contributed into our, into the life of the church that's not identified in the Bible, but you know, you're pretty, you're pretty, the Holy Spirit's probably in that, you know? Yeah. I mean, the biggest I think is, is leading singing. You know, Paul doesn't, Paul doesn't mention it. It's certainly in the Psalms. It's all over the Psalms. And, yeah. and, and we've all experienced, man, heaven open up participating in corporate worship through song. You yeah, know, that's a timely example, and you can't say it because you're his dad, so I'll say it. But what a gift to have Nick here this weekend to lead worship. I mean, that's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Like, just the whole, yeah, yeah. what a gift for all of us. Yep, yep, yeah. You know, we could probably come up with some other, you know, very clear, um, you know, examples of that, of, of, of yeah. something like that. You know, like, oh, gosh, like counseling, you know, uh, maybe you can throw discernment. Paul identifies discernment. Maybe that's part of counseling. But that quality of empathy, 
you know, that deep listening that invites others to process what's going on, that, you know, that, that moves them to greater clarity or, um, you know, resolution to something they're struggling with. Yeah, yeah I've experienced that in powerful ways, you know, and Paul doesn't yeah. identify that, but, you know, I'm not, I think that's the Holy Spirit at work. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of one. I grew up with this man named Bob Wooden. Bob had, uh, he built these massive drag line machines like up in Northern Montana to, uh, you know, to, to build uh, reservoirs and channel out canals. And he'd, he'd contracted polio doing mm. that like in the late forties. Oh, spent, right. Spent like a year in an iron lung at one point in his life. Um, and then finally gave out or, you know, was able to get out, but he was debilitated, uh, you know, a lot of ways. But this, this guy, um, he just visited with me. I got to know him. He was, his wife was, he and his wife were in a Bible study at my parents' house. But Bob would like sneak out of the Bible study and just talk and visit with me during the Bible study. And then by the time I was in high school, I was, I was visiting Bob over at his house just to talk and, and, and spend time with him and, you know, continue when I'd come home through college. And I mean, I don't know, I don't even know what to describe that is other than this gentle presence, this, this, you know, man that, that cared for me and listened to me and told me great stories. And I mean, is that, is that mentorship or coaching or listening? I don't, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I yeah. know it's a gift. Yeah. Friendship. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, friendship. Yeah. That's easy. Old that's man easy. to a young man. Yeah. Power yeah. of it. I mean, real impartation. I mean, that's what a men and boys camping trip thing is all about. Yeah. you know stuff very profound i mean stuff go you know boys just suck testosterone out around that campfire and and we're not doing anything quote spiritual you know we're just hacking at each other you know poking at each other just yeah doing what men do but they're you know the 12 13 14 year old boys who are just Soaking that up, huh? Soaking that up. You know, oh, this is, oh, this is how men love each other. You know, that kind of, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. a grace. You know, that's a charismata. You know, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So these lists aren't exhaustive. And, uh, you know, what about what can, do we want to touch on this today? Or maybe there's another chapter that's better, but what about, I mean, just for those that might be thinking about this, the the wrestling between the cessation of the gifts or the continuation of the gifts. I mean, this always comes up in and around this, right? Like the availability of the gifts for us as believers today. Do you have a thought or comment on that, or do you want to set that aside for now? Well, no. Well, well, just the. I I think. <laughs> it's the discomfort with the miraculous, you know, the working of power. Uh, I mean, the cessationists, folks who say the gifts have ceased, well, the teaching gift hasn't ceased. You know, the exhortation gift hasn't, hasn't ceased, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of things. That so is that, is that the, the enlightenment brain that just goes, nah, that stuff doesn't happen anymore. That's just not what we see today. That's, yeah, that that's my hunch. I, I, I think cessationists tend to be rationalists you know mm. modern rationalists who think that what the bible gives us are propositional truths that we apply to our lives and in any sense of um you know as, and so the canon's closed and there's no need for god to speak anymore because everything that needs to be said has been said you know that's how that's mm. framed oftentimes what about the way that maybe gets abused on, on the yet far other end of the spectrum where it becomes, you know, if you haven't demonstrated a gift, then maybe your faith is bona fide. Is that, I mean, that's kind of the other extreme, right? Just to be fair to kind of the spectrum. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I, well, well, and I think Paul shoots straight at that in between 13 and 14 when he says, you know, a desire, the higher, what was what he, the higher gifts? Um, well, let, me, let me get the 
but earnestly desire the higher gifts and I will show you a more excellent way. That's how 12 mm -hmm. closes and it flows into, if I speak yeah. in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm a noise and gong and a clanging cymbal. Right. So, you know, so, so for in, in a community that's uh, super animated by that kind of manifestation, Paul says, whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. That is, yeah, might be the Lord, not necessarily the Lord. Let, let me see the fruit of love in the community. Because mm -hmm. that's the, you know, that's the real tell. Okay. Right? Are you serving one another? Are you caring for one another? Are you reaching out uh, beyond your circle to hurting and broken others? Oh, they're okay. Yeah, that's that's the those are the spiritual ones. You know, you know, folks who do the dramatics. Well, maybe not not discounting that. I mean, I, I've had some pretty dramatic. Someone speaking in tongues and then you know, and then bring, bringing an interpretation. I mean, it's it's worth telling real quick. I was doing a men's retreat. Um, gosh, this was the late '90s, and I had a friend of mine from Visalia leading worship, and he's he's on a keyboard, and there's about 120 guys in the room, uh, and uh, he hits this chord, and this was not a Pentecostal setting at all. And he hits this chord and he holds this chord on his keyboard, right? And all of a sudden he busts out over the microphone in tongues, okay? So I, and, and I'm sitting in the crowd, you know, not, not all of a sudden all my antennas up because I'm, I'm, I'm the responsible party here. Right? And I'm thinking, and, you know, but, it, uh, but I, I trust in Milt, you know, and I knew him to be a faithful guy, not an egoist or anything like that. Mm. I, th I thought this is going to be interesting. So, so he he gives his his utterance in tongues, and an old guy across the aisle from me stands up, and he quotes Acts one eight. You know, oh my people. You shall receive power when my holy when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Right? I mean, it was as clear as a bell. Right? The room is dead silent, and what nobody in the room knew, except me and my friend Brian, who was the speaker, was that we had gotten together just a couple hours earlier, and he was changing his text to Acts one eight. <laughs> right and so i guess an, this answers the question can anything good come from visalia yes 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 no man so it was man and then the and the the sense of the lord's presence was was tangible and everyone just stayed in a in an attitude of worship Man, for, for a couple hours, and we just began praying for one another. We uh, we put a chair in the middle of the room, and guys would come up and start praying. Um, so it was a powerful time. Wow. Powerful time. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, so I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm a true believer, you know, but, but Paul, hey, but there is something more important, and that's loving one another, you yeah. know. The, these higher gifts and, and, and he'll get, and he'll get, get at that. Well, and this whole pull towards unity, this whole, you know, this, you know, you know, regarding the community of the body of Christ is what he's, he's, of course he's, he's pulling towards. Uh, and it's where the churches in Corinth is falling apart. Right. Um. And so then you get I mean, you get twelve and thirteen, right? So and so he talks about these diversity of gifts and the variety and the you know variety is the spice of life and everybody has a different contribution to make and boy we all get mm -hmm. that and it all comes from the Lord all that's great. Read to twelve and thirteen. Sure. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body though many are one body, so it is with Christ. 
For one, for in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Right. And that's very familiar language from Paul. He says a very similar thing, Galatians 3, 28, no, you know, no Jew nor Greek, no slave nor free. Right. Um, he says a similar thing in Colossians uh, 3, 11. And there you see the, the, the intensity of welcoming the person who's dramatically different than you. Mm. Right. This is something I wanted to say a moment ago, you know, we're talking about kind of recognizing gifts in others. I think I've learned in the last few years, sometimes recognizing the gifts in others, and this is going to just demonstrate what a jerk I can be, but people that annoy me, people that bug me, usually it, it takes me a bit of work and prayer to get there. But what I, what I found more often than not is there's a gift at work there that it's just not my gift, you know? And so there's an essential role for that person. That's nothing that I, but you know what I mean? That's what, that, that's almost the alarm bell for me. Like how ah, this person chased me a little bit. And the second thought is, I bet you they have a gift that I don't understand and relate to yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Cer cer certainly true in and personally. Yep. Imagine, you know, the, the, the Jew Greek issue. Mm, yeah. You're, you're, you're talking about major cultural divide that Paul is insisting on, on a unity there. You know, that's, yeah. that's part of what's going on, the eating meat sacrifice to idols. I mean, these are dramatic barriers to, you know, that, that feel good sense of, Hey, we're all in it together. That, mm -hmm. that, that we tend to, uh, mark as you know hey the spirit is is here because we feel so good well maybe maybe you feel all you, you feel so good because everybody's pretty similar and likes the same things mm -hmm. and your emotions are just pinging together that's not saying the yeah. spirit's not there but don't make the mistake to saying that is a spirit so mm. I, I so i was in india okay and uh in fact, we can we uh, we support uh, this guy named uh, Suresh Kumar, in uh, he's from South India. Uh, he he's an indigenous Indian leader, a powerful man of God, and uh, we went there for a couple of weeks. And I was teaching at their uh, at a pastors' conference. I had about eight hundred of their pastors. Okay, and so I, I'm on the platform, and uh, and the worship team is down on the floor on the right okay and it's time to you know start start the service and this guy has a microphone and he starts singing in tulagu okay so that's the you know that you know that was the indigenous language in india that they were speaking um you know what you know one of the couple thousand and you know the different dialects in india you know Place that you know the fact that that's places a, even a unified country is incredible. I mean, e even on the money, the 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 denomination of the bill, there's like eight or ten different alphabets <laughs> telling oh you God. what kind of oh how anybody gets anything done in that place is beyond me. Uh, but this guy starts singing in Tulagu, and after about four or five beats, then the band comes in. And the band is primarily rhythmic, okay, with, with a clear Asian kind of, you know, that's a whole different scale pattern. You know, it's just, I, and I'm not orienting to this at all. Like, I have no idea, you know, what, what's going on. But the whole congregation joins in to this, you know, to me, what feels, it's just, it was probably the most foreign experience I've ever had, I've ever experienced. Because, yeah. you know, it's not, it's just not, it's not a song I know. It's not a, it's, it's not a, even a, 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 a scale structure I'm familiar with. And I'm, I'm supposed to preach after this, <laughs> you yeah. know? 
So, you know, you know, so I'm not getting that, uh, that emotional feel good. Right. Yeah. You're feeling disoriented. I'm deeply, deeply, profoundly disoriented, but there's one thing I know the spirit of God is present. Mm -hmm. I'm completely disoriented. God doesn't care. <laughs> His people are worshiping and I'm an outsider who's been graciously welcomed in to be a part of that. That's a little how I felt at that Pinabras service at 3 a.m. in the morning up at the Norbertine Monastery a couple nights ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I am, you know, I don't speak Latin, so I'm, I'm a bit lost. I have a translation here, but, but yeah, I would just thought the presence of the Lord, the word of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is here. Um, yeah, and I'm a, I'm a guest. With this privilege, yeah. Yeah, and a welcome guest, and a guest who's what recognized as a brother, right? Yeah. All right, and and so and so this is what Paul is 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 doing with these diverse communities that are in you know, in in some degree of conflict, certainly not unity, right? Yeah. And, and and he's affirming that look. What the God of all creation is doing is he has sent his son to be the king of all creation. And that means every human being in creation is invited to, to kneel at his feet. And that's not, and it doesn't necessarily going to validate your, you know, white American orientation to reality. Yeah, I've been thinking about race this whole time you're saying this and just the turmoil that we're in as a, as a culture and as a country. But I guess, I mean, but the place really is to start is in even in the American church, right? Where there's white congregations and black congregations and Asian congregations and Hispanic congregations. And, and certainly most of those have nothing to do with even speaking a different language, right? It's just cultural. Yeah isolation and yeah fra fragmentation yeah well well although viva la difference right there's no there's nothing in the bible that says you have to iron out your cultural differences in order to be together mm. see that's what he's saying i mean you we can be authentically who we are as proper you know white anglo-saxon protestants right and you know, be deeply united to you know the african-american church that sings gospel and shresh kumar's church that does that word tulagu thing you know yeah. and there's this deeper connection that's absolutely dependent on the holy spirit's engagement you know our dependence upon the holy spirit not what we're feeling not what we would prefer i'm backing up to last week too where paul kind of diffuses the bomb of hierarchy first right like you got to undo that before you get here because that's that's the thing that can start happening in difference you know yeah you're different i'm different but my you know but i'm also better or yeah because i'm in the majority because most people do it my way so we'll do it my way right right all right, and, and now that now that goes right to where Paul's going next uh, when, when he starts talking about the body, right? And he uses the body parts to to uh, reinforce the sense of integration, you know, and the wholeness, you know, that our bodies are ears, eyes, nose, feet, and all of that. Okay. Right. Um, well, let's move again. Okay. You need me to read? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it it really begins in. You know, he starts kind of flow. Well, I'll just read 14 and 15 and then jump in, jump down to 21. Because uh, there's something there I want to detail. I don't want to lose time. But we but we get a sense of it out of 14 and 15 and then okay. go to 21. You got it. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body and if the ear should say because i am not an eye do not belong to body that would not make it any less or part of the body if the whole body were an eye where would, oh sorry i went a little further than that um but we get the idea right and then i'm going to jump down to 20 21 
Right. Um, and it says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head of the feet, I have no need of you. Keep going. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. Going shooting straight at the weaker. And, and, and we talked about what Paul thinks about the so-called weak, right? Earlier, yeah. talking about the guy with a weak conscience. And there's some question about how Paul feels about that. Because here, what he's saying so clearly, the weaker member is indispensable and deserves higher honor. Now, now in an honor-shame culture, and that we're, this is all about social status. Right? right. And what Paul is saying is, hey, the weaker, that, uh, that person among you, who doesn't have any status, doesn't have any money, you know, you think do, doesn't have any, you know, much to offer, slow down. That person very likely is the most important person in the community. And the question is why? Because of like, their near, nearness to the spirit, right? I mean, the, the, the dependence, they've broken down that pride or egoism that would hold the stronger members distant yeah, that's good yeah i'll take that it also means i gotta let go of everything i am in order to welcome the guy i've got to go low you know put aside oh the wonderful me in order to you know hang out some authentically with somebody you know without patronizing them like aren't you glad that i'm your friend no people see through right see see through that right away in fact early on in feed my sheep uh we, uh we had a meeting with you know the folks who were coming regularly in order to just talk about how things were going this number of years ago now and I, and I can't remember the gal but but she said um she said uh we've we've been uh evaluating you We've been trying to figure out if we can trust you mm -hmm. because, you know, in their experience, oh, people want to help them all the time, but, but not in a way that speaks of, you know, just real deep friendship and just, Hey, I'm just, I just want to be your friend, man. And when she said that, I, I just, I just, I just whispered a, you know, a thank you, Jesus. Yeah. You know, these, you know, you know, you know, this community really feels welcome, you know, and, and a part of what the Lord is doing here. Uh, you know, it popped into my mind, as you said, is too, is another ministry of Grace Fellowship. But, you know, anybody who spent even a little bit of time with our, our brothers and sisters and in, in celebrate recovery, you know, which I guess the world could easily see as weak, right? Yeah. People that struggle or something or uh yeah you know i could name names but i know what it is a gift of to visit and sit next to and you know call friends oh. uh, and that curve so yeah yeah Gl glory as we might say yeah yeah we might say that <laughs> yeah yeah it's you know it's now you are Oh, what's Hollis Kimbrough's favorite verse 27? In fact, that's my launch on that. That's the verse I'm launching on on Sunday, launching from mm -hmm. on Sunday. All right, this is for you, Hollis. Here we go. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Keep there going. It nope, that's oh, it. Just that. That's it. That's a, that. You are the body of Christ and individually members of it. That's a summative line. Yeah. This is where we need Christian to go. Is that really supposed to be the first line in the paragraph or the last line of <laughs> the paragraph above? So yeah. Christian, I'm asking your question because I think, right, that could just be the summation of everything he's saying. Yeah, yeah. 
because it's the corporate, you're right, the y'all, all y'all all are the body of Christ, this profound, um, you know, unity and individually, right, members of it. So Paul does not strip us of our uniqueness of what makes me different from you and all of that yeah what a what a deep mercy and gift i mean to like the two greatest needs of the human heart right to like to i one i need to be part of a group i need people to love and people to love me i need to be known i need to know others and i have this deep desire to be recognized as an individual so there it is. There it is. Both, right? Yeah. You are of a of a group, and you are utterly unique. There, yeah. your two greatest needs satisfied. Yeah. Now go to work. Yeah. 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 So, quit messing around. Quit trying to, you know, quit trying to blow it up one what one, one way or the other. Yeah. Because mm. because you are the pneumatikoi. You are the spirit filled ones. And as you relate to one another, as the Holy Spirit is in your midst, you will bear witness to a, a radically different way of being in the world that proves the reality of Jesus's resurrection and the fact that we are living in a new eschatological reality that Paul will call new creation. Mm. Right. And it's and it's most and, and what's remarkable to me is that it's most manifest in this profound unity in the midst of real variety and distinction. Mm. Right. Where we've got to submit to the Holy Spirit because what you are so different from me. I just don't understand, but I don't need to understand. I just need to love. And then you said on Sunday, this really caught me, you know, the work of the hour or the work of the day is the restoration of that unity because so many things have pulled us apart, you know, even in this last year. Right. And, okay. and continue, continue to tear at us. So. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, I, and it's a real, real obediency to this. Yeah, and it's going. It's weird. To, it's weird for an old book. I mean, it just still seems very relevant. Oh, I tell you, it it is it is amazing. It is. It is amazing. I've been reading this thing for forty years, man. You think it would get old, but it never does. That's good. All right. Next week is uh, man. Higher the higher gifts, you know, which is love, and you'll be traveling, so we'll we'll try to tie in, right? Yeah, we'll try to tie in. If not, I'll pass the baton to Christian next week. He can yeah. do a couple two man shows. Yeah, um, that'd be good. Yep. But yeah, I'm gonna try to try to get in there if I can. I'll be on the road. We'll see how the connection works. Sure. Yeah, middle of Arizona. Who knows? Yeah. All right, man. All right. Am I praying this out? You're praying this out. All right. I'm going to read Hollis's verse before I do. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Dear Lord, I thank you for the amazing um, gift, grace privilege, honor, um, mercy, to be called to be your body, um, to be welcomed into a community, um, to be known, uh, to know, to be loved and to love, um, to, uh, to experience in our weakness, the strength of others, um, to experience, uh, in our strength, the gift of others' weakness. Help us to see that one. It's harder to see for us. Um, but Lord, I do ask in the power of your spirit um, that you would unite us, that you would remind us of all that we have in common, which 
could be just a list of one thing, and that's you um, and your presence, your spirit indwelling us. And would that draw us together as your body? Would it remind us um, that we have been found by you and, and therefore let us uh, find one another and restore um, that which has been broken? Uh, Lord, uh, we cannot do any of this hard work without you. And so, uh, again, Lord, by the, the power of your name, by the presence of your spirit, would you lead us this week and always? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Very good. First Corinthians. All right. That's it. Yep. Thanks for, thanks for joining us in podcast land. God bless you guys. God bless.